Welcome to the Setup for Success podcast. I'm your host, Sara Lee, and I will be your guide on this transformative journey to success. And this podcast is for all my young, ambitious souls out there who are just trying to find their way through life, just like me. We want to be successful so bad, and sometimes there's roadblocks that happen, or we just need a sense of direction. And sometimes it's important to tap into those conversations that you can relate to, and that's where I come in. Set Up for Success is something that I created because I... I'm just like you. I'm just trying to figure it out as well. I just graduated from Hampton University and I got my degree in journalism. And podcasting has always been something that I've wanted to do. And I've loved interviewing and I love learning from people who can give amazing advice. So this is a safe space for you to get inspired, to want to motivate your own self to succeed in whatever it is that you want to do. And today, this is just the introductory episode. It is launch day, so it's a super big deal to me. And I want to get into the launch date. So today is actually June 16th. And the reason why I decided to launch today on June 16th is because it's Tupac's birthday. I'm a super huge Tupac fan. Um, And I've always been inspired by Pac. Like, I remember listening to him when I was about, I first discovered him when I was like 13 or 14. And ever since then, Pac have always been someone that inspired me and just motivated me. And he died at such a young age, but I always look at the the steps that he did to create such a powerful legacy at such a young age. He literally died when he was 25. And if you look at all the things he's accomplished at that age, it's actually really, really crazy. So I've always been inspired by Tupac. And I just always felt like, you know what, that day is super important to me. And when the time came around for me to start thinking about days on when I wanted to launch my podcast and put it out there, June 16th just felt like obviously the right day. So here we are on June 16th, Friday, 2023, starting this journey and just getting inspired by Pac. He's actually 52 today. Uh, I believe so. He would be turning 52 if he was alive. So hopefully his energy and his um, rawness and realness can flow through me today on today's episode. But It's just the introductory episode today, so it's just going to be me and you, and I'm going to be just talking to you about who I am, because we're going to be on this journey together, and you got to know who you're listening to, and just understanding my journey. I'm very young. I'm only 21, but I feel like I've had a lot of amazing experiences where I've really had to push myself outside my comfort zone to accomplish a lot of amazing things at this age, so I want to get into that. And I'm also going to let you guys know, um, before we talk about who I am, that these episodes and this podcast is really going to be one of those podcasts where I'll have a range of guests, and then I'll also come in and give you solo episodes just like this, where we'll talk about specific topics, whether that be personal growth or confidence, or just anything related to success and motivation. So... Without further ado, let's get into who I am. So my name is Sara. I was born in Conyers, Georgia, grew up in Decatur, Illinois my entire life. Um, I have an amazing support system, an amazing family. Um, My mother is from Ethiopia, so I am East African. And my father is from here. I have two brothers. And we are all just a tight unit, just an amazing family. I've had a great I've had the privilege to be raised by some amazing parents who have cultivated me to the woman I am today to just have this mindset and just have the privilege to live a life that I had during my childhood. I'm super grateful for them. And I feel like that's what's also just kept me afloat with staying focused on the type of life I wanted to live and just being an all around good person. I definitely learned that from them and my siblings. And fast forward, I grew up in a smaller town, so Decatur is like pretty small. I ended up going to like a Catholic school, uh, all white schools growing up, so that was pretty challenging at certain times because nobody really looked like me or I didn't really relate to anybody for real, so it was like it's up and down moments. I mean, many students, many people who say that they've went to schools where They just didn't really feel connected to anyone. We all have similar experience. So I want to get into all that today. We'll save that for another time. But I graduated from my high school and then it was time for me to pick a college. So 
I remember at the time I graduated at 17. So that was like kind of young. But a lot of people are graduate from high school. They're 17, 18. But typically it's 18. So I graduated um, early. And I feel like 17-year-old Sara was just very, obviously, 17. I'm just very young, very, I was still mature, but I mean, I wasn't immature, immature, but I needed some time to grow. I definitely did have uh, the idea in my mind, though, that I didn't want to go too far away from home. And honestly, I really wanted to just get my gen eds out the way and save some money before I decided to go to either of my dream HBCUs. So that's what I did. I went to Lincoln and I got my um, associate's degree. I went there for two years. Lincoln is literally like an hour away from my house. No, probably not even that. If you're, if you drive like me, it's like 45 minutes. So not that far from home. So that was good. So I always had the convenience of coming home and washing my clothes and seeing my parents and seeing my dogs. It was great. Life was great. But I did enjoy Lincoln. I learned a lot and I actually got to be around people that look like me. Everybody who went to Lincoln, came from like Chicago area, Indiana, St. Louis. So it was like a nice small town with just black people who went to this school. So it was a nice change for me because I never got that experience before. And I ended up meeting my best friend at Lincoln. So shout out to my bestie, Antoine. Um, he's been a huge part of my life and I couldn't imagine him not being in my life. So I'm so glad that I decided to go to Lincoln because that's where I ended up meeting him. And then I decided like going there, the, the choice actually was because they had a good broadcast journalism program from the Midwest, just like an entry program. I knew I felt that I wasn't going to stay, but I felt like it was a good stepping stone for me to just kind of get started with talking in front of the camera, talking on the radio, and doing all these things. So um, it was a good start. I learned a lot there, and I feel like it definitely prepared me for Hampton. And um, once I decided, let me change this whole curriculum around, I went to my advisor and I told her, like, look, I want to change my classes from broadcast journalism to just general studies. So that's what I did. I ended up switching my curriculum around and I ended up just studying general studies just to get the basics done so then I can transfer over to Hampton. But I was in decisions about Howard or Hampton because I always just had this ear about Howard just because of their strong alumni. And then there was a point in time in high school where I kind of wanted to do acting because it was just a form of expression that I liked. But I fell more into the broadcasting, the journalism side. That's really what I wanted to do. And then I was just comparing. And at the time, we were literally during the pandemic. So COVID-19 was happening. And I'm just like, oh, my God, I'm not going to be able to visit the schools. All I can do is just look at pictures online and ask around. So I... I really did more research into Hampton because I'm like, Hampton is a beautiful campus. And it's always been that one of the HBCUs that I just heard about that I just loved and I thought it was beautiful. And I remember um, the alumni that I looked at, DJ Envy was one, of course, and Kendra G. And Kendra G at the time, because we were at home, she actually did like this webinar where you could pay and you could come to the webinar and just listen to her talk about her journey and all these things. So I paid, I paid for the webinar and <laughs> I got on the webinar and I asked Kendra, I'm like, should I go to, I'm like, I'm like, I literally just graduated. I'm trying to decide, should I go to Howard or Hampton? And she was like giving me all this advice. And she was like, you know, if you want to be a bigger fish in a bigger pond, go to Hampton. She was like, I went to Hampton. You should go to Hampton. It's a good school. So I just kept looking into it more and I was asking everybody, my family, my friends, my mentors, and everyone was just saying, just pray about it, just pray about it, just pray about it. And I was honestly getting so tired of hearing that, but I was just like, I haven't prayed about it, so let me go do that. So I took some more time, thought about it, I did pray about it, and then I decided I was going to go to Hampton. So I committed to Hampton and they took all my credits damn near, so that was great. And I just 
went with my family. We drove 13 hours, packed up the car, packed up everything. And they took me to Hampton, Virginia. And I loved it. Like it was so beautiful. Everyone was extremely nice. And if you're from Illinois or anywhere in the Midwest region, you know, that is so different for us. I mean, I was just walking around like these people are just so nice. I'm not used to this. It's crazy. So I just knew my family was excited for me. We were just in shock on how beautiful the campus was. And I just really felt like I was at home. Like I felt like this is my home by the sea. I'm like, I made it. This is where I am supposed to be. And after that, I just felt like I have to do what I have to do in order to get to where I want to be as a media talent. And I feel like it was a great space for that because everybody, like the journalism program was amazing. Uh, They had a top tier studio. I mean, literally it was amazing. We had radio station in our building. We had one of the nicest buildings on campus. So I was just always excited to go there and just be around everybody and talk to everybody and introduce myself. So I just felt at home. And even the professors, when I first came, they just were like, oh, my God, like this girl is just really ambitious. But it was so weird, too, because everyone was just wearing masks and we were walking around. It's COVID happening. So everyone's just kind of trying to figure out who they were. And it was great for me, though, coming in as a transfer because I came in right during the pandemic. So my sophomore year, because it was so small at Lincoln, we could go in person and wear masks and just go to class. But Hampton, they were like, no, we're not doing that. So everyone who was there in my class, they were at home their sophomore year. So when everyone came back, it was just kind of like a reset. So I kind of felt like freshmen all over again, just kind of trying to meet everybody and talk to everyone because it's like no one knows who anyone is because everyone's wearing a mask and it's just different. So it was definitely a time. I feel like I've grown so much from Hampton and I was able to do so many things just because of my determination and just being in people's face like That's one thing I can say about this success journey that I feel for me has been the most important thing is just about not caring and putting yourself out there. And I'm going to tell you guys this, like, so I've tried filming this one very episode, like four, five, six, like 10 times, not even exaggerating. And I felt kind of discouraged and I kind of felt like, oh my God, what am I doing? Like, this is not working. And like, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. And sometimes you just got to be like, I am just going to start. I'm just going to do what I have to do to get where I'm trying to go. And I don't care if it looks embarrassing. I don't care if people are going to judge me. I don't care. I'm going to do what I have to do to be successful and to get the outcome that I want. And I feel like I was way bold about it when I got to Hampton because it was just like, you only got one chance. You only have two years of school left to do what it is that you actually want to do. And that mindset put me in places I never thought I would be so early on. And I feel like that's why I have this drive and determination to want to talk about success and motivation so much because I know the power of believing in yourself and just putting yourself out there no matter how hard it gets. It's definitely possible. And I'm going to just share one story um, to you guys so you guys can get this gist of what I mean with my journey. I've had so many stories, but I'm going to just share one today Um, because it just changed the whole trajectory of how I thought about going after things and then watching the outcome. So my professor at the time when I was at Hampton, we were getting ready to go home for Christmas break. So this is around December and everyone's getting ready to go home. I mean, like half the school is home. Like I was always one of those people because I lived like 13 hours away. I was always probably one of the last people to go home. So my professor was like, like I was in class and he just walked past me because there's like a glass door you can see. And he was just like, um, he was like, sorry, let me talk to you for a minute. So I'm like, okay. And then I go with him to the office and he's like, uh, I just got this opportunity. Um, and they're, they're looking for somebody to go cover this, uh, legacy classic. 
and the guys are going, the basketball team, the band's going, it's in Jersey, and we need some some students to go and cover it. He was like, your hotel's paid for, everything, you, you just got to go out there and do it. So I'm like, he was like, and I think there are some celebrities going to be there. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is crazy. So then I asked him, I'm like, who's hosting it? And he was like, Michael B. Jordan. And I'm like, you're lying. And he was like, no. So I'm like pumped. I'm like, this is going to be crazy. Now, mind you, nobody guaranteed me an interview. They just wanted me to literally go and make a package of Legacy Classic. And if you don't know what a package is in news terms, there's a skirt. A package is basically when you go to an event and you just cover the event. You get shots. You do a stand-up, which is just – there's so many news terms. I'm sorry if you don't know the news newsy terms or the media terms. But basically a package is like what you see when you go home on the news when somebody covers a festival. That's a package. So they asked me to go make a package of Legacy Classic and it was going to be me, Noah, and two other guys were going to be um, coming to, in my you know school, they were going to be doing the print. So I'm like, okay, this is awesome. And I was just like ready to go. And he was just like, is it cool? Because I know you guys are getting ready to go home. And I'm like, no, it's fine. It is fine. And I called my parents and I told them I'm not going to be home yet. I'm, I got to go to New Jersey for Legacy Classic. And they were all for it. They're like, okay, yeah, go ahead. And this is not like right on Christmas Day, but it's like getting pretty close with Christmas, you know, getting ready for that. But most people would have been like, hell no, I'm going home for winter break see y'all in January. But for me, I was just thinking like every opportunity you have to just, it doesn't really matter because you just never know what could come from it. I don't care. It like, honestly, it could have been my birthday week. Well, mm, I can't go that far and say my birthday. Well, I mean, it could, well, I, knowing me, I probably still would have went, you guys, I probably still would have went, even if it was my birthday week, I probably still would have went because that's how, that's how ambitious I am to go after things that I know probably could help me with trying to get to where I'm going to go. And sometimes you got to make sacrifices. Sometimes you can't go to everything. Sometimes you might miss a holiday or you might miss a birthday or something, but you have to go after it. So that's what I did. We went to Jersey and this wasn't like a, a luxurious, like, um, like way there like we rode in the bus with the band and my neck was like just it was so uncomfortable but the whole way there I did not sleep so it didn't really matter because I was just studying and preparing and I was watching I was watching like Jamila Mustafa's videos on the way there on the bus because I just loved her vibe and her personality and I was writing questions and thinking about things that I would ask Michael if I got to talk to him or celebrities that I would meet like it was like I was manifesting this on the ride there to Jersey on on my phone like in my notes app I'm just writing things as if they were going to happen and I had no idea they would because it's like who can guarantee an interview with Michael B. Jordan during the pandemic nobody so um once I got there it was just like go time once we got dropped off on the bus it was like day one nothing was happening during the game per se but it was just like people were already walking around but it wasn't anything serious because we were just scoping out the arena but I still kind of wanted to just be prepared at any moment like I'm like, my mic is always ready to be put in someone's face. Like I was not playing y'all. And um, then it was cool. Nothing happened that day. So the tomorrow was the next big day. And I was prepared. I was prepared. Like that's all I can tell you is I was prepared. And I feel like that speaks volumes because had I not prepared questions for him, had I not prepare questions for other celebrities that I could bump into and had I not been prepared to ask athlete questions or just fans questions I would have missed out on opportunities I would just be looking around like oh there goes Serena Williams oh there goes Michael Rainey Jr. oh there goes Terrence J when it's like I could I could have been prepared I could have been ready You know, so I always had this mindset of stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Prepare as if it's going to happen because it will. 
because it will because I said so and because the universe is always on my side so when I got there I seen Michael B walking around when he first walked in he waved I saw him like as he walked in during the national anthem and he waved at me and I was just like that's a good sign and you know, he was just in and out because you know how they, how they are when they're working, they're doing different press things. They're talking to the athletes. They're you taking pictures or doing all kinds of things, but little old me had a plan and I always have a plan to get exactly where I need to be. And this is one of those strategies that I feel works so well when you're in rooms and you're trying to network and you're trying to meet the people that you want to meet and you just don't know how to go about it. You have to scan the room. You have to be so observant of everything going on, because if you're an observer, you will be able to calculate what to do at what time, how much how much boundaries do you have and how not to go too far, obviously. So um, I have been watching him the whole the whole time and he was getting ready to go on the court for the slam dunk contest. And he went out there and I literally had on these thigh high boots. I took them off. I put on my slides because I could not walk in those shoes. And I was just like, I have to get to Michael B by any means. I don't care what I have to do. And you can also see like on the Instagram, if you go on my Instagram at Sara Lee on air, you will see in those photos, I have on literal slides because I was so determined to get to him. Like I was not kidding. And those little heels was not going to stop me. And I didn't want to look like a deer, like just like trying to get to him. So he was literally in the dunk contest. Media is all over the floor. And I'm just there with my cameraman, Noah, and I have my microphone and we're just standing there. And he's just like, you know, he he's like looking at me like, oh, my God, this girl is going to get us kicked out. Like I could tell. But then he he was also having that vibe of like, if you're going to do it, you better do it now. So I, it was kind of like jumping rope. Like if you guys could see me right now, it's, it's just like that. You know, like when you're playing double dutch, it's like that that just you're pacing yourself. So that's what I was doing. I was like testing the moment because I didn't want to come at him too soon. Then security would be like, back it up. So what I did was I waited. And then when the time came. I, I approached him when the time was right and the time was right. And he, I literally, you guys, it was crazy. Like the producers were so mad. I don't recommend anyone do this by the way, because, well, I mean, if you, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, but the way I went about it, I was so hungry. And I feel like, because he, he just seen, because I was so genuine with the way I came up to him, with how I asked him, with what I said, that he was just looking at me like, okay. He stopped everybody, the TNT producers. I mean, this is a live game, you guys. And there was like a swarm of cameras around us. And I just was like holding my microphone in that moment. And he was just telling me that about the game. And then he was telling me how proud he was to see me out there. And I was just extremely grateful for the opportunity because I was just like, not everyone is going to be that kind. And also it was just a time where I was just shocked at my own courage to go after something I really, really wanted. And the thing is, I wasn't worried about, is anyone getting pictures? Is anyone capturing this? I was just locked in. I was just locked in with him at the moment. I was locked in. And we got that footage. And the blessing behind it was I was just like, this was my first big celebrity interview. And people remembered. I remember when I came back the second year, everyone was like, oh, my God, I remember you, you know, doing that. And it leaves an impression. The reason I tell this story is because when you step out on faith and when you do things that might seem scary or you don't know how the outcome is going to be, you don't know how people are going to react. If you just move with genuine intention and you have a plan in mind, God will take care of it. Everything will part ways. And it'll work out for you. And that's what I learned from that experience was like, this is the beginning. That was the first time I felt like, especially in my career, where I felt like I just took a big leap. And this is what it's going to feel like every time when I take a huge jump for something and then I get a big reward out of it, which was the whole school was proud of me. 
My whole entire university was extremely proud. My dean was proud. I was proud. My family was proud. You know, my friends were like, this is crazy. And I just knew like, this is the start, you know? And I just want us to be able to, as young people, not be afraid to go after things that feel like this is scary. Just do it. Just do it because you have to do it. If you don't do it, you'll never know. And the thing is, it's just like so many other things happen for me after that, that I will talk to you about on further episodes. But for episode one, I just kind of want you to get the idea of how important it is to really just jump out on faith and do things that you never thought you would do and just try it and see what happens. The worst that the worst that could have happened that day was the guy would have been like, Michael could have been like, no, I'm not doing interviews or the security could have literally just pulled me back and been like, no, we're not doing this. Or the producers like Michael could have been like, sorry, the producers are saying, no, I can't. So many things could have happened, but it didn't happen because it was meant to be. So with this journey, all I want is for you guys to get ready to be inspired, get empowered and be motivated and not be afraid as young people to just take charge of your life because you can do whatever you put your mind to. We're so young and there are so many things that we're going to experience that I'm going to experience. And this roadmap is going to be so amazing for everyone listening because I just know set up for success is definitely going to be an outlet for us to just talk amongst each other, listen to people who have made it, Listen to people who are actually not even that far ahead and just gain wisdom in career, in fitness, in mindset, in just manifesting prayer and all these things that we have to do because you only have one life to live and you might as well just try your best to set your life up for success because you don't want to be on the other side of that, just setting your life up for failure and not giving yourself the gift of patience and just work ethic to try to get to where you want to go and that is it you guys that is the end of the first episode I'm so excited to be going on this journey with you guys I have so many amazing guests in store I'm even excited on them committing um to being on the show you guys are going to be so excited to hear from their experiences my experiences and how it's going to help you And think about those things that help you get to where you want to be. And however you define your success, it's going to happen for you. You're going to make it. You're going to be okay. Just breathe and just know that everything will happen when it's supposed to. Peace and love, you guys. And I will see you guys in the next episode. Bye.